in a small village nestled among rolling hills and lush green fields. There lived a wealthy farmer named Jacob. Jacob had two sons, Ephraim and Asher. Ephraim, the elder, was diligent and dutiful, always helping his father in the fields and tending to the livestock. Asher, on the other hand, was restless and adventurous, always dreaming of a life beyond the village. One day, Asher approached his father with a bold request. Father, Asher began hesitantly. I have something to ask of you. Jacob looked up from his work, curious. What is it, my son? I want my share of the inheritance now. Asher said, his eyes sparkling with excitement. I want to see the world, explore new places, and live my life to the fullest. Jacob's heart sank. He loved his sons dearly and wanted the best for them. He had always hoped that Asher would find contentment in the village, but seeing the determination in Asher's eyes, Jacob reluctantly agreed. Very well, Asher. Jacob said with a heavy heart. I will divide my estate and give you your share. Within a few days, Asher gathered his belongings and set off on his journey. He traveled far and wide, experiencing the vibrant life of distant cities. He squandered his wealth on lavish parties, fine clothes, and fleeting pleasures, making many friends along the way. But as the months passed, his money dwindled, and so did the number of friends who cared about him. One fateful day, Asher found himself in a foreign land, penniless and alone. A severe famine struck the region, and Asher struggled to find food and shelter. Desperate, he sought work from a local farmer who agreed to hire him to feed the pigs. Asher's life had taken a drastic turn. He spent his days in the muddy pigsties, starving and filthy. One evening, as he watched the pigs devour their slop, he realized with a sinking feeling that even the pigs were better off than he was. How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare, and here I am starving to death? Asher thought bitterly. I will go back to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. With a heart full of remorse, Asher began his long journey home. He practiced his apology over and over, hoping his father would at least allow him to work as a servant. As he approached the village, his heart pounded with anxiety. Meanwhile, Jacob had never stopped yearning for his youngest son. Every day, he stood at the edge of his fields, scanning the horizon for any sign of Asher. One afternoon, as the sun dipped low, Jacob saw a familiar figure in the distance. His heart leapt with joy. Could it be? Jacob murmured to himself. He squinted, his old eyes filling with tears. It is. It's Asher. Without a moment's hesitation, Jacob hiked up his robes and ran to meet his son. Asher saw his father running towards him and fell to his knees, overwhelmed with guilt and shame. Father. Asher began, his voice choked with emotion. I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But before he could finish, Jacob embraced him tightly, tears streaming down his face. Oh, Asher, my son, you are lost, and now you're found. You were dead, and now you're alive. Jacob called to his servants. Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Prepare the fattened calf. We are going to have a feast and celebrate. Asher was astounded. He had expected anger, perhaps even rejection. But here was his father welcoming him with open arms and a joyous heart. The servants hurried to fulfill Jacob's orders, and soon the household was bustling with preparations for the grand celebration. Ephraim, who had been working in the fields, heard the commotion and asked one of the servants what was happening. Your brother has come home. The servant explained. Your father has killed the fattened calf because he is him back safe and sound. Ephraim's face darkened with anger. He had remained loyal and hardworking all these years, yet his father had never thrown a feast for him. He refused to join the celebration and stayed outside, fuming. Jacob noticed Ephraim's absence and went out to speak with him. My son, why do you stay out here? Come, join us in celebrating your brother's return. Ephraim's eyes flashed with resentment. All these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders, yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours who has squandered your property with wild living comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him. Jacob placed a gentle hand on Ephraim's shoulder. My son, he said softly, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. 
Ephraim's anger slowly melted away as he looked into his father's earnest eyes. He realized that his father's love was boundless and that there was enough room in his heart for both of his sons. With a deep breath, Ephraim embraced his father, understanding the profound truth of forgiveness and love. Together, they walked back to the house, where Asher awaited, his heart full of gratitude and hope. The family reunited, their bond stronger than ever before. The feast began, and the village joined in the celebration, rejoicing in the story of redemption, love, and forgiveness. Asher learned from his mistakes and worked alongside Ephraim, rebuilding his life and earning the trust of his family and community. The prodigal son had returned home, and in doing so, had found a deeper understanding of love and family than he had ever known. The story of the prodigal son imparts profound insights into the human condition, emphasizing the transformative power of forgiveness, the importance of humility and repentance, and the boundless nature of unconditional love. It teaches that despite our flaws and missteps, reconciliation is always possible, and that compassion and understanding are crucial in overcoming resentment and jealousy. This parable celebrates redemption and new beginnings, reminding us that it is never too late to change our path and mend relationships, highlighting the joy that comes from embracing and celebrating our journey back from waywardness. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this story, please like, share, and subscribe for more tales of love, redemption, and family. Until next time, keep spreading love and kindness.